developing countries face an annual investment gap of 2.5 trillion US dollars. To bridge this gap, 70 to 80% of these investments would have to come from the private sector. And for the private sector to participate, you need markets that work. That means we need the private sector as an investor, innovator, and an operator. For markets to work, they require an enabling environment. That means, for instance, very basic that property rights are respected and that we have principles of business regulations. Second, we need access to finance so that companies can invest and grow, and we need access to physical infrastructure so that people and goods can travel. And third, very important, we need physical access to markets, and that can entail, for instance, literally a market square, think of your farmer's market, but it can also mean integration into global value chains or export markets. Very important when we talk about creating markets, we rarely ever refer to creating genuinely new markets. In most cases, it is about improving the performance of severely underperforming markets or expanding markets into new territories. So issuing the first green bond in a new country, for instance, or introducing leasing services to a country that hasn't had them before, or within the country expanding a market to population groups that have not yet benefited from it. For instance, bringing financial services to micro enterprises that were excluded from the banking system. Creating markets or helping them perform better is at the forefront of the World Bank Group's strategy, IFC's 3.0 strategy, and the maximizing finance for development approach. To find out what worked and what did not, IEG conducted 16 case studies to assess World Bank Group's interventions in agribusiness, financial inclusion, and information and telecommunication. The results are overall positive. IEG found that IFC assistance, together with World Bank support, contributed to creating markets. Such assistance made markets more inclusive, competitive, and sustainable. Yet more efforts are needed to promote better diagnostics, improve access to the poor, and monitor risk capacity. We saw a lot of innovation happening across the case studies, introducing of new products or new services, redesigning processes and making them more efficient, or using innovative financial products. And a very good example here is the effort of IFC, where it paired up with the Global Agricultural Food Security Program in support of the Solomon Islands. And the program, as well as IFC, jointly invested $30 million into the sole domestically based fishing company, the so-called National Fishery Development, NFT. And that support did not only allow NFT to purchase new fishing vessels, but also to expand its capacity in a sustainable way and gain access to export markets. Another example where IFC has helped to gain access to global value chain and export markets is Cambodia rice. Before IFC support, rice millers in Cambodia worked with quite outdated milling technologies. Then IFC advisory came in and supported those rice millers in upgrading their milling technology and lift their compliance with international food security standards. And as a result, many of them now have access to export market. And not only that, it also helped to mature several of these players along the value chain to mature into potential investee companies for IFC as well as other banks. The report issued in total three recommendations. The first one is about integrating private sector aspects better into country partnership framework, the CPFs. The country private sector diagnostics, the CPSDs here, have a high promise to deliver on that. The second recommendation focuses on enhancing market creation for the poor. While we saw a lot of market creation happening, we also saw that it was more difficult for the poor to have market access or benefit from market creation efforts in general. And the third recommendation relates to IFC's risk-taking capacity. As the World Bank Group and IFC advances and rolls out the creating markets approach into either countries increasingly, it is very likely that these deals become smaller and will also become more exposed to business and macro risks. So for the sake of building up a financially sustainable IFC portfolio, IG recommends that IFC management regularly reviews its risk-taking capacity.